Hey, I'm Jamal and today I'm going to show you how Pixar's Martian hair shader works in Blender. First I have to say you're able to do mostly everything you need to do with fur or hair with the Pixar Martian hair shader, but nonetheless I recommend to use the Pixar hair color node and connect it with Pixar's Martian hair shader. But even though it's very important to understand how Pixar's Martian hair shader works, so let's have a closer look at that. There are two diffuse models such as Sinky and Kajia. To me Sinky works much better and looks far more realistic than Kajia. But have a look how Kajia works and maybe you like it. A diffuse gain of zero is good if you want to have dark hair but grey or blonde hair won't work with such low numbers. Diffuse color is the main color of the hair. But if you change it, you will see there are not so many changes now. But why? Hair shading works like this. The first thing you see is primary specular. This value is to compare with a clear coat. It's only the colorless reflection on the hair surface. So don't change the color if you want to have a realistic looking result. A higher value can make your hair look wet or greasy. The second parameter is very important when it comes to hair color. It transmits into the hair, reflects from the inside back out of the hair. I recommend to use the same color as you used as diffuse color. There's still another parameter which is affecting the color of the hair. And this is transmit specular gain. This is about the light which transmits directly on the other side of the hair. This is always a result of a backlight. So if you place a light behind an object and in the camera the hair seems to glow, especially on the tips. This is especially very important when it comes to cinematic lighting in both animations and real movies. Those gain sliders affect how strong these effects we talked about are. and. Glint adds a glinty effect. I personally like this effect very much and leave it always at one or higher. A higher primary cone angle affects softer specular highlights based on the primary specular light. The same thing with secondary cone angle. But transmit specular values are a bit different. A higher transmit cone angle helps to make your fur look softer. But it's quite noisy if you increase the number. So if you use it, you maybe need to increase your sample rate or use denoising. With specular offset, you can shift specular reflections and sort of slide into another place. And with a higher number of refractive index, you can make the hair look less transparent and it's getting a sort of metallic material. I personally don't touch this slider except when I'm shading hair from toys like a Barbie or these creepy looking trolls. Fresnel mix is a very physical topic. I won't go too far into that now. It has something to do with refracting and transmitting energy. Um, keep in mind that a lower number will make your fur very translucent and white. Glint width is a way to change the glinting value. I personally would not go over 25, then it starts to be unrealistic. You can see here how glow works. It really lightens the scene as a standard light source. And of course you can change the color of this glowing effect. Yep, and that was everything I wanted to show you in this tutorial. Keep in mind that colorizing is much easier if you're using the Pixar hair color node. And thanks for watching and see you the next time.